I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing here at Biomark and just wanted to thank you all for attending our webinar. I hope that you all are safe and healthy today. Got a great attendance, uh, just to name a few, uh, some friends across the pond, Spain, France, Ireland, Portugal, Belgium, uh, some friends north of us in British Columbia, and then California to North Carolina to Florida and West Virginia today. So thanks again for taking time out of your day. Uh, we sincerely appreciate, appreciate it. We've got a great webinar today talking about the array of pit tags that Biomark offers and the implanters and solutions for that. Um, our goal is to give you an idea of the range of species and applications that the different pit tags and implanters can be used for. Uh, these web webinars are our effort to stay in touch with you during this challenging time, and we are still open and operating. Our production and shipping staff are currently at our office or our facility in Boise, Idaho, and we are taking the necessary protocols and procedures to make sure that they stay safe and healthy during this time as well. And the vast majority of us um, are working remotely from home. So I'm sitting in my family's uh, little camper trailer on the side of my house today. And my colleague, Matt Brower, who is going to be presenting to you, is coming to you live from his kitchen. So uh, we're all working through the challenges of, of working remotely and working from home. Uh, we will be recording this webinar. So if you want to rewatch it, reshare it, uh, please feel free to do so. We'll put it up on our website and social media as well. As you may have noticed, everyone's in listen-only mode, so that way we don't have any microphone issues. Um, so if you have questions, we encourage you to type them on the right-hand side of your screen there under the Q&A section. We'll try to answer them uh, live in real time during the presentation. And we will stay on the phone or on the line uh, afterwards as well to answer any questions that anyone may have. So with that, I will intro my colleague, Matt Brower, who's our sales manager at our Boise office here. So Matt, go ahead and take it away. Well, thanks, Hayden. And like Hayden said, welcome to my kitchen for the third round of webinars. Uh, the reason for this webinar is just to give everybody a better understanding of the differences of the wide range of tags we offer, as well as to demo the advantages <clears throat> of the preloaded trays and tags. All the tags I'll demo today are going to be the full duplex B tags or FDXB and then the half duplex tags or HDX. Both these tag types are the 134.2 kilohertz ISO ICAR certified tags. And what this means is that each of these tag numbers is guaranteed to never be repeated. Um, along with uh, certain regulations of guaranteed performance and testing of each tag and also if you have a 134.2 kilohertz scanner, it will read the tag. The reason why we have a wide variety of different tag sizes obviously relates to the size of the animal being tagged, but there's also a relative read range association with each of these different tag sizes. Simply put, the larger the tag, the larger the read range. I figured for this webinar, I would start with the smallest FDXB tag that we offer and then move to the largest tag, and then I'll cover HDX at the end. So we'll get started here with the HPT8 tag, which is our tiny little guy here. I can get him on the plate. This tiny tag measures 8.4 millimeters in length by 1.4 millimeters in diameter. This is a great little tag if you're not concerned about read range. So for researchers who are just doing like a mark recapture study and are only ever going to scan the animal with a handheld reader, this tag will work fine. But if there's any in-stream antennas or any stationary antennas that you plan on using with this tag, or if there's plans on using any stationary antennas, we highly recommend you go to a slightly larger tag. This is a really popular tag for laboratories uh, where people are tagging mice in laboratories or small little amphibians out there. Pretty cool how small that little guy is. The next one is the HPT-10. Now the, the, 
This tag measures 10.3 millimeters in length by 1.4 millimeters in diameter. And this tag has tons of potential because it's essentially a slightly longer version of the 8 millimeter tag. It still is that 1.4 millimeter diameter, so it's still our skinny tag and still uses the same 16 gauge needle. But that two extra millimeters in actual length of the tag adds more copper and ferrite inside the tag and actually gives it a significant read range advantage. This tag is really popular with people who are doing uh, like uh, studies with our low profile antennas like the BP plus antenna or like if you have a window uh, low profile antenna and you're trying to monitor something flying in and out. So bats, it's really popular with bats, but it's also actually become our really probably one of our best selling tags for turtle researchers out there. So that's it for the skinny tags or the mini tags, both of them use these, I just have a simple little syringe style implanter here, and this one is the 16 gauge needle, which is called the N165 with this small little uh, MK165 implanter. These next series of tags are going to be the, th the around the 2.2 uh, two to 1, 2.12 millimeter uh, diameter tags. So they're a little thicker. So this is the HPT-9. The HPT-9 tag measures 9 millimeters in length by 2.12 millimeters in diameter. And this was the original uh, micro tag for many, many years. And this tag continues to be the gold standard in the Pacific Northwest for tagging salmonids under a certain size. This tag works really well because it's essentially just a chopped down version of the popular uh, 12 millimeter tag. But this tag works extremely well for if you have fish under a certain size, but you want to maximize read range on, say, like in stream antennas, or if you have any stationary antennas out there uh, and you're concerned about tagging them with a 12 millimeter tag, the 9 millimeter tag is a great option. Oops. Now we move into the realm of the 12 millimeter tags. This is our new flagship tag called the APT-12. The APT-12 tag measures 12.5 millimeters in length by 2.03 millimeters in diameter. So it's actually a slightly skinnier than most of your standard tags. This is the highest performing 12 millimeter tag, <clears throat> 12, 12 millimeter full duplex tag on the market today. It was specifically designed by Biomark for use in the fisheries world, but has vast applications, uh, you know, other than fisheries. This, ha this tag has a proprietary IC, which allows it to perform even better in high noise environments. It also works really extremely well in your high speed environments like hydropower facilities. So if you have a, a hydropower facility where you have spinning turbines and you have a significant amount of concrete and metal out there, this would be the tag that you'd want to use just because this tag works well in high noise, high speed environments. This is also the recommended tag that we uh, that we would recommend to use for in-stream, uh, if you have any in-stream antennas in the river or if you have any, you know, low profile antennas that you can actually insert this tag into, this would be the best tag for that. The next tag. Ah. Is going to be the GPT-12. Now this is our general performance 12 millimeter tag. This is also an FDXB tag. It measures 12.5 millimeters in length by 2.12 millimeters in diameter. So it's it's the same length as the APT-12. It's just slightly wider. This tag has less read range and less detection probability compared to the APT-12 tag. So this is a tag that is most commonly used for uh, like the aquaculture industry if you're just going to be marking a ton of brood stock out there. But it also <clears throat> works really well in a mark capture, uh, mark, mark and recapture applications for wildlife applications as well. But again, if you're looking for a little bit more read range, we would highly recommend going to the APT-12. The next tag I have 
is a really unique tag. Matt, I had a question that came in on the sure. uh, GPT-12 and APT-12 tag. Somebody wanted to know what's the what's the difference in general difference in read range. Yeah, so that's two. a great question. So the problem, not the problem, what there's two things that actually influence read range. One is going to be tag size, but the other one is actually going to be antenna size. So if you have a lot, a, a large amount of really small antennas, say, you know, six to 10 inch uh, antennas, you're probably not going to see much read range difference. But if you're going to use these on like our larger 10 and 15 and 20 feet antennas where they're going to be in stream, that's where you're going to start seeing around a 20% difference actually in read range between the two tags. Great, thank you. Uh -huh. This next tag is the Biotherm 13 tag. And this is a very unique FDXB tag. This tag measures 13 millimeters in length by 2.12 millimeters in diameter. It's unique because it actually takes an internal temperature of the animal when, that, when the tag is read. It'll take a temperature between 25 to 45 degrees Celsius, but it has a plus or minus uh, 0 0.5 degrees Celsius accuracy window between 33 and 43 degrees Celsius. So you can see by the temperature window that this tag was actually developed for mammals. But we have several researchers out there who are actually using this tag to actually tag birds. Uh, we have a lot of people using this tag to tag like ground squirrels, uh, so burrowing mammals, and it works really well for that. It's a neat little tag. So that's it for the two millimeter diameter tags. And now we move into the really larger, this is the HPT-23. So this is still a full duplex B tag. It's just 23 millimeters in length. So it actually measures 23.1 millimeters by 3.85 millimeters in diameter. So, but you can see by the size of this tag that it was not, not intended to be used with juvenile fish, but this tag actually has a massive amount of read range, but you know, so it's great for like adult Salmonids or, or sturgeon is another really popular, or carp is really popular to actually tag this, use this tag for. But it has a massive amount of copper and ferrite on internally, and so it has a huge read range. So that's really all I have for the full duplex tags. Now we can move into the half duplex tags. So half duplex tags utilize an internal capacitor inside the tag that work like a tiny battery. So the size of the tag is generally larger than compared to FDXB. So the internal capacitor needs to be charged by the energy actually from the antenna before it'll actually start transmitting. So HDX has a tendency to be slightly slower than FDXB. And so it's not recommended that you use a half duplex tags in like your really fast moving environments. All the HDX tags that we offer at Biomark also carry that ISO and ICAR certification, just like the FDXB tags do. So here is the HDX 12. And this is actually the smallest 12 millimeter full, uh, half duplex tag available right now. So this tag measures 12 millimeters in length by that 2.12 millimeters in diameter. And due to its small size and internal capacitor, this really limits the read range of actually this tag. But for researchers who have HDX only readers uh, and are looking to small to tag like smaller juvenile fish, this is a great option for that. The next two tags, I'll just bring them out together, are the HDX 23 and the HDX 32. So there's the 23, here's the ginormous 32. So the HDX 23 tag actually measures 23.1 millimeters in length by 3.85 millimeters in, length, in diameter. So it's actually the exact same size as the uh, HPT 23. This is just the half duplex version. The HDX 32 is a monster. And this tag actually measures 31.2 millimeters in length by 3.85 millimeters in diameter. But as you can see by both these tags, they are not intended for juvenile fish as well. But they work really well for large fish and mammals as well. 
both these tags have actually a huge read range because of their size. And interestingly enough, the HDX 23 was this was the the smallest HDX tag that you could actually buy until the HDX uh, 12 tag came out in 2012. So the HDX 12 tag is actually a relatively new tag in the industry. The HDX 32 tag is pretty funny if you look at it compared to like the 12 millimeter tag. It's like what am I do what am I tagging with? So all the larger tags can be injected very similar to the smaller tags. You just need to go with the bigger needle. And so this is the N206 needle right here that can actually hook to the MK10 uh, standard implanter. And if you look, you'll see actually the push rod come out the end of it right there. But the bevel of the needle is monstrous. This thing's like a scalpel. So if you need them, we have them. Uh, a lot of people with the larger tags will actually just make a small little incision and then a, a couple sutures and you, you do that as well. So that's all I really have for pit tags right now. Is there any questions? Uh, we have one that was asked a while ago on the, can you clarify the ISO and ICAR, please? Yeah, absolutely. So what the ICAR certification is, is the guarantee that that tag number will actually never be uh, repeated and so that is quite unique uh, you know that you know that if you buy an ICAR certified tag you're not gonna have the same tag number as somebody all the way across the world and then have any mixture like that the ISO certification just is a very simple certification that if it's a guarantee that if you have an ISO rated reader which reads 134.2 kilohertz uh, in frequency that that will read this tag so there's no um, encryption no funny frequency that you'll see. Uh, it's very important that, that you have both these certifications on the tags as a peace of mind that the tag is going to work. Uh, you have guaranteed uh, read range and not read range, excuse me, testing and performance guarantees. Uh, and then also the tag will never be repeated. Okay, great. Thank you. So with that, well, let's move into our preloaded trays. We'll get rid of the dish tray and move in the big tray. Center it in the screen, make it look pretty. So Biomark offers a full line of, uh, our full tag line in the preloaded option with the exception of the 32 and, 30, uh, and 23 millimeter tags. So the preloaded trays come in this 10 by 10 uh, configuration, which is 100 tags per tray. And then every single needle is, this, these are single use needles, have actually a tag loaded in there. I don't know if I can get it to focus, but you can actually see the tag kind of poking out of the end of the needle right there. So the tag is actually held in place by a small silicone bump in the bevel of the needle here. And then in the back here, you have this plastic uh, a hub that has a push rod that's actually shoved down in there. Now the push rod is there to guarantee that actually the push rod of the injector gun, which we'll get to in a second, actually never makes contact with the tag. So, and also, the needles are friction fit into the tray so that even if the tray gets turned upside down, none of the actual needles fall out. So, and I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, you can see it down here. There's these small little tabs on the bottom of each one of these uh, pubs right here. What that, what that tab is, is actually an indicator of which way the bevel is pointed uh, inside the tray. And so that every single one of these needles are actually lined up in a certain orientation. So this is important for tagging orientation and just for tagging speed. And so the, if you can read the Biomark logo in the center of the tray, this is actually set up for right-handed taggers. So that if I was to stick the tagging gun in there, I always get a bevel down tagging orientation into the fish. For left-handed taggers, all you do is you simply turn the tray around. And so that's just something that we, you know, thought up years ago, but it's important to point out. So if you don't actually need a full tray of tags, say you only need 25 tags, 
and you don't want to buy a full 100, but you still want to use the preloaded option like this with the MK25 implant gun, we actually sell these in a preloaded capped version where you'll get the needles, but they'll have a plastic safety cap over them. So instead of them showing up in a hundred tray like this, they'll actually just show up in like a bag and you'll have, you know, 25 needles and tags that will attach actually to the MK25. So here is the MK25 implanter gun. If you want them in the smaller option, we also offer the MK65. So the only difference actually between these two is actually the push rod size. And so this one has the appropriate push rod sizes for the nine and 12 millimeter tags. And you can see that this guy is a slightly smaller and slightly shorter push rod. And this is actually designed for the eight millimeter and 10 millimeter tags. So there's two triggers actually on the implant gun and you know, inevitably everybody messes it up one time. Um, the black trigger down here on the bottom, this actually, you know, produce, uh, pushes the actual tag out of the needle itself. Whereas this guy right here, this is your ejection trigger. And so if you have a tag, uh, I mean, excuse me, a needle loaded into the gun, and then you implant the tag, and we can put one out on the piece of paper there, then you can basically shoot the actual needle off into a sharps container. Get it out of there stabbing myself. These needles are very sharp and the first time I ever used them I cut myself. This handy little thing here is exactly what it sounds like. This is the preloaded tray clamp and this is a cool little option that people seem to love and all it is is a very thick piece of high density polyethylene plastic that's hand welded together with a clamp on the other side that allows you to put a tray in there Clamp it shut, and then so the nice thing about this is that when you pull the uh, when you pull the needles out of the tray, the tray doesn't lift up. So if you don't have this, a lot of times what happens is you will put the needle in there and you lift the whole tray, or you'll have to use two hands. And so it was just a kind of a neat option that we offered to allow for single hand operation. Matt, we had a question come in on the. Uh, tray system Absolutely. someone wants to know if those the tray uh, the needles can be recycled Yes, absolutely. So the trays themselves are plastic trays that can be recycled. The needles are a steel needle with a plastic hub and push rod. And if you have a local uh, recycling facility that will actually take non-medical waste steel and you know, needles, uh, these actually can be recycled as well. Great, thank you. The last option I have here is actually going to be your preloaded sterile tags. So we offer these in two different uh, two different formats. We offer the 8, the 10, and the 13 millimeter tag actually in a preloaded sterile syringe. So you'll get this in a you know, packaged, you know, sealed package, and this will actually be a full syringe with the tag actually preloaded in there, and there's a small silicone bump at the end of it, just like there is with the larger trays, but this is 100% gas sterilized. You also get a label system here that will actually give you the tag number as well, and so you can actually use these labels to, to put them on data sheets or whatever you want, but again, this the, the, the full syringes are for 8, 10, and 13 millimeter tags, so the 12 millimeter option, you have a preloaded sterile needle. So it's not a full syringe, so a little bit less plastic waste, which I kind of like. Uh, and it works just like uh, the preloaded trays, but instead it actually is a gas sterilized needle. So it's important to mention that the MK15 is a small little implanter. That's a great little implanter. Um, actually hooks to these via lure lock. <clears throat> we have a new um, lure lock MK25 coming out. So it'll, it's, it's going to be an orange version of this that'll actually allow you to hook uh, the preloaded sterile needle to the MK25 implanter. Uh, we'll have that available. We're, we were supposed to have it available earlier this year, but the coronavirus got everything all messed up. Uh, also, this is the GPT-12 in here, uh, which is our general performance tag. Our new tag that will be available uh, with the Lure Lock MK25 will be the APT-12 tag, and so you get a, a significantly higher performing tag out of it. 
Hey, Matt. Yeah. We had a, a general tagging question. Sure. What happens when you accidentally double tag a fish? Will you then detect both tags with the reader or antenna? You'll actually detect neither. And so there's a thing called tag collision where if you have two, uh, the tags sitting right next to each other, uh, and if they're the same frequency tag, you will detect neither one of the tags. If they're a different frequency tag, generally the uh, F, the ISO tag, the 134.2 kilohertz tag, will blow the doors off of like if you had an A tag, like 125 kilohertz or an encrypted tag, uh, the 134.2 uh, tag will actually be read where the other one will not. And if there's some, if the tags aren't next to each other and there's some separation, then do you have a chance to read both or how does that work? Absolutely. I mean, in the sea turtle industry, they'll put a tag in every flipper. I think it's a terrible idea, but they, they tag every flipper because turtles actually get their fins bit off significantly by sharks. And so they'll actually put a pit tag in each flipper and go through and actually scan each one of the flippers. So as long as they're, oh, I don't know, you know, Eight inches apart, uh, you know, six inches apart, you'll probably read both tags. Okay, thank you. So the, the preloaded sterile syringes, uh, sorry, I forgot to mention one thing. These are really popular for people who don't need a massive quantity of tags and don't really have that much time to actually go through and sterilize their product. So they're really uh, popular for people as in zoos and aquariums where they're really concerned about disease transmission. And that's really all I have on tags. Any questions on the preloaded trays and the implanters, anything like that? Yeah, a couple, a couple more questions came in, Matt. Um, someone wanted to know if they have tags already, can they send them in to be put into the preloaded form? Yeah, absolutely. So we do uh, what's called a customer loads all the time. And so say you have 5,000 tags sitting, you know, in vials at your, you know, at your facility and feel free to send them in and we'll actually load them into the preloaded trays. Uh, generally, the cost is around 65 cents, uh, really depending on how many quantity you have. If you have 100 tags or if you have 100,000 tags, there's probably going to be a price difference between the two. Um, we do bulk rates on mass loading. And so, yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's a great, great question and a great option that we do. And also, if someone wanted to know, I know we've gotten this question before in the past, but can we autoclave tags to sterilize them? We don't recommend it. Uh, autoclaving of tags. Um, so the IC of actually the, 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 the microchip inside the tag itself can be damaged in uh, anywhere over about 90 degrees Celsius. Autoclaves run at 121 degrees Celsius. And so we've had people that are successful into doing it. I don't know if they can turn their autoclave temperature down, uh, but we don't recommend it because generally it'll ruin the pit tag. Okay, thanks. quick. Okay, yeah, I, th I think I have worked through all the questions here on my sidebar. Um, well, let's hang out for a little bit in case we get any other questions that come through. Absolutely. And thanks again to everyone that joined us. And once again, we hope you are safe and healthy during this time. And, and please feel free to reach out to Biomark. We are here for you. So thanks again, everyone. And thanks, Matt. Nice job. Thank you.